Your face didn't know who it was. I slapped it a few times and it only smiled blankly. You were not Jane, Nancy, or Emily. I was not Dick, so forth and so on. For the time that we had, I enjoyed being you. You said so yourself. Who were we together? You were who I was. I was what you are. We were in the dark. We only agreed. It felt like a tunnel. An echo retreated as confused as ourselves about which way it was going. I can only conclude, however we pulled apart, somehow forgetting we were ever together to start with, solitude was like embracing the air. Hoping for something to drop out of it, we were where we were. It wasn't the library, it wasn't the park. A murmur passed through a partially open door, or it may have been a window or a wall. The murmur may have asked a profound or inane question, or maybe it was just a sigh of indigestion. The murmur may have come from the window, from a voice, or from a dream, or from hallucination. A partially open window or a door may invite an uninvited murmur or a rumor of a murmur to making something happen for someone bored, or maybe something more in between a rumor and a murmur. Maybe something happens as a murmur with a rumor get along like a hiccup with a dirty joke included does either equal zero or a plus in the pause before a murmur and another are there murmurs in between or a rumor of a murmur in between a rumor of a rumor as rumors may invite a murmur of a rumor is it only that or is it war it's uh, called wishful thinking i hear the wind is that it? I hear the wind whistling in the pool. No, it's just good. Who says it's serenade? I find it's a different ear that would rather hear voices from a place like a trail of magic. Because it keeps playing into an unfolded opposite of something itself. For now, I rest in the space of the two dimensional circles around the folds of the painting, where the foreground slides into a slanted horizon like a gigantic snake looking for God. While the wind stops to listen to the subject of conversation, I would like to discuss. If I could talk to a voice from beyond, how would I simply explain I'm looking for reassurance? Does the painting seem like a stain about to bleed out into some kind of semblance of something that wants to exist and can't find its way into space? The wind doesn't answer. Whistling around in the room, it sounds in a hurry as if anxious to muscle up in the eye of a storm and return like a child to step on the yeah, two big city that built for the wish. Thank you. Can you hear me what's that? Nightmares, welcome in the sun, said the first vampire. 
you saw resemble quantum fluctuations at the second one. Let's get lunch at the third one. And we took an A train uptown. It's called 1789. Louis had his usual breakfast. One roast chicken, six eggs in a sauce, one slice of ham, one and a half bottles of champagne. Vision of wild boy running through the woods made him smile. Marie Antoinette was happy. She planned to change her hairstyle. She wanted to decorate it with an adorable little village with me. She will party in Trianon later. But now, she'll have a brioche. The peasant woman walked through the window. She heard the rumbling. She couldn't tell if it was Santa or Stamukhaun. She hasn't eaten for two days. She took a pitchfork and left the house. Thank you. And the last one is called New York. New York, through romantic. The setting sun tells you to avoid philosopher. Purple clothes in our grimy streets. Your verses don't make sense. You say we exist, but we don't. You say God is here, but he left us. Your melancholic silhouette breaks my heart. Disappearing light shines on your crown, glows on your golden ring. You throw yourself into a volcano at twilight, but you reappear the next day on a sidewalk. Your magnificent mental turns into a filthy blanket. Your crown becomes a wretched car. You look delirious and lost. I see a flip of the night. Or maybe it's your magic ring sparking in the sun. I did, yeah. Spoilers. Totally. If you don't like spoilers, you probably should put your fingers in your ears. <clears throat> spoilers. Rosebud's a sled. And Mrs. Bates, she dead. Ahab succumbs to the white whale. The sole survivor is Ishmael. Jane and Molly both say yes. Proud Yago refuses to confess. Well, nobody's perfect. Some like it hot. The wizard turns out to be a bust, as everybody knows in God we trust. Job gets friendly advice. Gatsby shot. Winston loves Big Brother. Yosarian bolts for the open sea. After much rafting, Jim goes free. Soylent Green is people, OMG. Dr. Jekyll is Mr. Hyde. Spartacus ends up crucified, giving his life for a noble cause. Edmund Gwen is too Santa Claus. And Oedipus loves his mother. Anna dies, Charlotte too. And oh, fragile reader, so must you. The poem is called Give It, uh, Give it to Me Straight. It's another reference poem. Give it to me straight or tell it slant, howl or articulate, shout it in a rant, chant it in a tongue men do not know, or plant it on a starlit golden bough to sing the blues, invoke the muse of history, invoke the triple muse. Beat around the bush or bottom line it, first thought, best thought, polish and refine it even polish and refine it. Show me, tell me, heaven and hell me, make it clean, concupiscent and obscene. Make it smooth, peaceful, serene, or let it be harsh and torn with strife, but no one can know the other side of another person's life. Cry it in the wilderness, tell it on the mountain, shout it from the rooftops, scratch it on a monument, but no one can know the other side of a person's life. Thanks.
What pounds the shore are my primal drives, for her body is the beach of a thousand seas. Parched at times, drenched at times, no sign of life but for small bubbles, those living lusts that lie below. And so I am a vagrant beachcomber, raking my nails over her flesh in mad futility. There is no treasure, old fool, only what's in her eyes. Mento Mori. I keep the dead around as snapshot gestures of my inner monarchy to remind me of my mortality. Familiar faces on the edge of my vision, on the edges of my vision, that on some days draw my eye, have to be recalled through this flat imagery only because I too easily forget faces and sometimes forget that the dead have died. Thank you. On the other side of Over the Hill, when a beautiful woman sees freshness fading as shadows hover over her glow, softness spreading to unwelcome places, a name forgotten, a thought misplaced, perhaps two, one after the other. Eventually she might suspect that she has knowingly moved and now lives on the other side of over the hill. The old side, the slow side, where canes and walkers rest in closets that held racket skates and speed. Canes and walkers rest in closets that held racket skates and skis. What can she do to stifle the scream? So no, I didn't think me. I never dreamed, so unfair and uncalled for. How dare my spark leave without apology or a note at least. My youngness gone, suddenly, shockingly, like a sudden squall out of the blue that levels a town. You can barely see the outline in the distance. You are excused from youngness and ma'am, they call you ma'am. When did it happen that young lady had morphed into ma'am? You in storage, in the archives, living memorabilia, now mature and sensible and wise, <laughs> out of step. Is this the end of fun? Hey, people you know are dying. They think you look great. They bless each day they are alive. You found a small brown spot on your wrist and you complain. So, so, oh my God, listen to me. Someone you went to school with is dying. Well, she has her problems and I have mine. <gasps> Doesn't it embarrass you to talk that way? Well, perhaps. But I'll tell you what really bothers me. On the other side of over the hill, when you step e into elderliness, it's very quiet. That bothers me. Who can I talk to without appearing ridiculous? Even narcissistic, living here alone on the other side of over the hill. Wrapping things up, Evie Ivy. God, that's too low. Okay. Uh, I'm not a <laughs> Thank you. It's okay. All right. All right. Nice to see everybody and to see people without a mask. Last year I was here with three masks, so it's nice to see people without any this time. I almost felt naked. I want to be honest with you in the subway without a mask. I'm going to read two very quick poems from my book, The Platinum Moon. And here goes. And time is. And time is not a toy. It moves rampant on earth. 
the beauty of days gone, what do they matter as it enables the new panorama? As if there was nothing lost among those broken pillars or skyline, what was buried among sand, water, or tight in the earth. Earth who knows everything and lets it all go. Earth wants a mere ball of dust tightened into the now. But time, time is everywhere and yet lost there and nowhere as it moves with itself. Yes, time, time won't be a toy. Thank you. Here goes the couch and the dream. Favorites from the book, the couch and the dream. Even in a dream, the truth is important. How is that when dreams can be so abstract? I dream I don't want a couch taken away. Two men have come to remove it. I tell them, why are you taking it away? Was it the company that said so? Please tell me the truth. Tell me, I demand. The couch seemed to have been special to me. I start to wail and wail as they start picking it up at each end. Please tell me it was the company. Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. My sad and loud constant wails awoke me. Even in a dream, the truth is important. Even in dreams where things are so surreal. Thank you. This poet, rules to follow and why. Do not feed this poet or he may follow you home. Do not praise this poet or you may have to listen to more poems. Do not give this poet a gun or you may become a captive audience. Do not buy this poet a drink or you may be immortalized in a bad poem. When you hear bad poetry from this poet, take the poem and rub it in this poet's face. Say, bad, bad poet, bad. Perhaps this poet can still be house trained. You won't know if you don't try. Thank you. Poetry Table thanks you. Thank you.